I have to wait as usual. Here we go. What's up, guys? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. Back as always with Billy from the UK. Hello again. Anxietyunited.com in the UK. Yes. We yes. are going to do episode 10. This is 10, right? You said? This is 10. This is 10. Episode Double 10. Double figures. Double figures. We are in the big <sighs> leagues now. So <laughs> we're going to do episode 10 of our Anxiety 101 series that we started a while ago now. And uh, we are discussing an article, I'll go through the same intro, an article that I wrote many years ago. We will link it in the video description on both channels, wherever you're watching. And we're just taking the article bit by bit and uh, going through each section and kind of talking about it. So today, what are we going to talk about, Bill? We are talking about the impact of lifestyle and the choices that you can make, whether positive or negative. Very good. This is true. So I guess what I'll do is I'll kind of just go through what I wrote, and then Billy has put me to shame with a, a torrent of good notes <laughs> that we can talk about. Oh, here comes Copper. My dogs are here, so you may they may make guest, okay. guest appearances. So what, got any input. <laughs> if they have any input, I'll let you know. Mm, um, mm. How not to be afraid of a thunderstorm. I'll have them talk yeah. about that. Uh, so what I wrote was, lifestyle choices can influence your panic disorder positively or negatively, which I think we would both agree with. So I just made... It's a short paragraph. I talk about eating a healthy diet, uh, avoiding alcohol and things like recreational drugs, because anything that changes your mental state can be an anxiety trigger. Um, I talked about regular exercise, getting out in the sun, and you have to wear your sunscreen. I, I'm obligated to say that. Um, getting sleep, learning time and stress management techniques. And I even wrote, I can't believe I wrote this, but it's true. Don't ignore your emotional and spiritual needs and uh, did that sort of thing. I can't believe I wrote that, because I was never yeah. that guy. But there's you truth in that. Tired. I was tired. I let my guard down for a second. But there's truth in that. There really is. I, I, I'm, I'm on board with that now. So that's kind of the broad brush. We should probably talk about that. And I think let's start with talking about diet. I think the general gist for today is that the lifestyle choices we make can have an impact, right, on, mm. on our mm. anxiety state. Because our, your lifestyle choices affect your mental state and your physical state. and Especially for me, I can only speak for me, when I get really run down, I'm eating like crap, and I'm not sleeping, you know, I'm more likely to have a bad day mm. anxiety-wise. Mm. So I think, be, yeah. do, you, do you think it becomes like a bit of a habit? Because it does for me, like I'll, I'll go on maybe a healthy eating thing for a few days, right. but then I suppose it's, what's the word I'm looking for? Convenience. Convenience takes over, and you just, there's a McDonald's two minutes down the road, you know? Yeah. I think if you're going to, uh, uh, in the note that I made, if you're going to really 100% go for this, then you've yes. got to be prepared to maybe put yourself out a bit. Like with the diet thing, maybe you have to buy fresh ingredients. You have to buy, make fresh meals instead of buying processed, pre-packed food. Yeah. And it just takes that a little bit longer to prepare. You know, the food is better quality. It's just that you've got to be prepared to put in a little bit more effort to get that reward, haven't you? It's about making an effort across the board rather than just trying to get all the benefits from doing bits and bobs here and there. If you're going to go for it full, 100%, then go for it. That makes sense. That's true. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. I think it's just like anything else we've talked about. The exposure takes that's it. effort. Yeah. Everything takes yeah. effort. So mm. um, I think we're out of audio sync again a little bit, but... Oh, I don't mind. Yeah. So anyway, um, we'll just, we're, we're just gonna, yeah. You know the other I, thing with with diet, the other thing would be like dehydration as well. I think people don't take enough water on board or liquid. And I've read in numerous places that being dehydrated can mimic some of the symptoms that we would get with anxiety and stuff like that. So like dizziness and you know. So it's important to make sure that you're getting the fluid as well. Yeah, you're probably right on that. And I, I will mm -hmm. say, like, the diet thing, when we started on that, for me, it wasn't so much that, and what took it for me was, like, going back to the gym many years ago and starting to yeah. lift again and starting to eat healthy because of that. And mm -hmm. when I do watch my diet and I eat well and I keep my weight down and, you know, I'm just, I guess it sounds ridiculous and cliche, but when I'm actually feeding my body what it actually needs to, like, be healthy, yeah. I mm -hmm. do feel better, like, even mentally. Mm -hmm. You just feel mm. more, for me, I feel more resilient, like I'm able to handle more, yeah. I can tolerate more stress, I can tolerate more crap as it comes my way. It's you know. not something that you think about consciously, though. It's not like eat a banana and sit there and wait to feel good. It's no. just something that would gradually, so maybe people sometimes expect, you know, if you sit down and eat a healthy day's food, you'll expect that tomorrow you're going to feel, and that's not what we're saying. I think it's you're a, right. 
it's a continuous thing. Don't expect this to change overnight. And I think it's probably important to say, and, and this kind of plays a little bit into the meds thing that maybe we'll talk about one day, but diet, I, I hear people talk about it. I actually made a video about that called What's What Are the Best Herbs? Gonna ref, I was going to refer yeah, to it, yeah. yeah. Best and, herbs and, what, and supplements. What, right. What can I take? What can I eat and ingest that's natural? People always say, I want something natural. And food is natural. That's fine. But mm -hmm. that will fix or help my anxiety. And like you said, yeah. it's not... I know a lot of people talk about things like magnesium, which is true. Magnesium is, is does have an impact on your nervous system and, and whatnot. But uh, I, I urge people to. We're talking about diet. It's just it's just a smart thing to keep your body in a healthy state. Don't yeah, look yeah. at the things that you eat. Any special foods, you know, magnesium. I hear a lot. Mm -hmm. Potassium. You mentioned bananas. Well, if I might raise my potassium levels, I'll be better. Yeah. There yeah. are people who eat cherries because they heard that cher you know cherry extract is good for anxiety. Like just, we're just talking about being healthy overall. We're not talking about it. eating something that's yeah. going to make you feel better instantly or fix things. So. This is a video. This is a video across the board for everybody, pretty much, isn't it? It's a not, little bit anxiety or otherwise. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the water thing is a good thing too. Sometimes I'm guilty of not drinking enough, so staying mm -hmm. hydrated is probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I think head headaches is another thing with dehydration. People they yes. say to drink a big glass of water, and it might just yeah be that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's, it makes a big difference. So the things that we the eat. The next. Yes. Oh, yeah, go on. No, no, I would say the things we eat and the things that we drink. And, and I would probably add, for me, and I can only go by in my own experience, I pretty much just drink water. I'll have coffee now and then, but usually it's decaffeinated mm -hmm. coffee. I stay away from caffeine. But I'm pretty much just drinking water all the time. So I drink a lot of tea. Yeah, I mean, that's Sorry, fine. Tea. English. And, it, yes, hey, you're, you're obligated. <laughs> yeah. So it's coffee. For me, it's it's pretty much just water or it's 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 coffee and it's usually decaffeinated coffee. But if you stay with, you know, liquids, it's not a good idea to go through the day drinking pounding juice or soft drinks that are loaded yeah, with sugar yeah. and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, what I the best advice I usually give people is like make every calorie count. So if you're going to take in a calorie, make it something that, that your body can actually use. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, a can of Coke isn't something that your body really needs or wants mm. or will use. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's that. So, you wanted to move on to the next thing exercise. That's a pretty big Well, problem. yeah, e exercise. I mean, that, that for me is one thing like I'll get set on doing something. And I don't know if you can offer any advice on this, but yeah. like I'll get, I'll get into something. I was doing the couch to 5K thing. I don't know if you've ever heard yeah, of that. Yeah, I've heard of that, sure. Okay, yeah. So, I, I went through the first week, I did three. I think it was three times in the week, so like you do it one day, have a day off, do it the next. And it was only like, I think it was walking for a couple of minutes, then jogging for a minute, then walking, and just basically gradually just building yourself up. Sure. But it's staying motivated to see these things through. That's where I come unstuck. I'll get into something and I'll feel a bit of a benefit, and then something will crop up, and then I'll just, it'll come to the time where I'm supposed to do it next, and it's just, I'll do it tomorrow. And then it just never gets done. And I don't know why I can't stay motivated to continue with it. Uh, that's a tough one because we, we all struggle with that. We all struggle yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what was it for you? What, what got you to the gym every day? What got me to the gym every day? So that was years ago. So I've been pretty much consistently lifting for, mm. again. And primarily my choice of exercise is, is weight training or strength yeah. training. Um, and I do my cardio too, but for the most part, it's strength training. What got me back in there? Honestly, it was just, it seemed like a challenge that I should meet. And when I was, you know, younger in my teen years, early twenties, I, I did that a lot. And then it just sort of fell off. Mm. And when I started having real anxiety problems and I started taking medication, I gained a huge amount of weight. I was a hundred pounds heavier than I am today. And uh, so there was no exercise in my life. And yeah. when I came off the meds and started getting my shit together, pardon my French, but uh, I, I just sort of naturally lost a lot of weight and I had gotten to, into the 250 to 240, 240 pound range, pounds here in the US. And uh, mm -hmm. I have no idea what that is in kilograms or stone. It's expensive. <laughs> yeah, high. I was still heavy. <laughs> and I said, okay, this is crazy. I got to go back to the gym. And I, and I started going to the gym, which was literally right around the corner from my house. I could walk there. I would drive there because I'm a lazy bastard, but, but it was right there. And it was just the challenge of like, okay, I've gone this far without doing this, so let's see what I can do if I actually start exercising again. And so then, was it 
did you go to lose weight or did you go to try and help? I, I went to lose, I went to see if I could lose more weight because honestly, that was right around the time of like my 40th birthday or so. So it was in my early 40s. Yeah. And you know, your body changes over time. So those of those of you who are watching or listening who are around my age understand that. And and your body is it's different. Not many left. Yeah, yeah, we're all dropping off. You know, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> so it's more I love it. Um, so your body changes and I would look in the mirror and think, well, I'm not liking this, and I know I could do something about it. There's no reason to just accept this. So I had a I had a lot of different motivation when I went back to the gym. Mm. And then for me, I'm I'm very motivated by a challenge. I just always have been. So I like to do hard things. So I wanted to be able to get to a 225 pound squat, which was doesn't sound like a lot to some people listening, I'm sure, but it was a big deal for me when I got the two plates on both sides and was able to do that again. So I did the next steps just become the next motivating they so it was just in yeah they did so like now how much can i lift now how much can i lift and it, it, it just became me against me and that's what kept me motivated and then you know the weight loss just kept happening so at one point i got down under 200 pounds which was a little too thin for me but mm -hmm. i did and and so i just become motivated by the challenge of doing it that's what helps me. so yeah yeah so it was good that you were motivated by that and not motivated by the weight you know what I mean? More so it, the that challenge. was just sort of that was a more of a side effect, yep. a positive side effect of actually it having was. something that you was focusing on. Maybe that's where I go wrong because I try to decrease the sensations by doing things more. Yes, rather that's the than. Goal, though. Yeah, yeah, but I think maybe if I tried to run for fifteen minutes, and then try and increase to run twenty minutes rather than try to run for ten minutes without feeling as bad. Right. Because that's what I I was always focused on that like. Can I do this session without feeling as bad as I did last time? The bad. And I don't want to. That's that's anxiety. Bad? Sensation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. So like sure. concentrating on how out of breath I am and stuff, you know. Hmm. So rather focus on how far you can go, not how bad you feel. And that this is a really good. I actually did two videos on this. I feel like it's like commercial for yeah, videos yeah. here, but I did a series of two videos on this, and I guess I could link those if you're interested in looking at them. But. Um, what I found yeah, was... Yeah, yeah, we will, definitely. Yeah, going to the gym, when I started going and exercising, and whatever, it doesn't matter what your choice of exercise is. It could be running, it could be walking, it could be any... For me, it was weight training, yeah. but it doesn't matter. It was the single biggest, best decision I made for my anxiety also because it just served as... What I found was something that I wanted to rise to the challenge, so I wanted to be able to lift more weight. I wanted to get stronger and all that mm -hmm. thing, all that stuff. So when I would start and I would you know, find myself, because I was, I was in a good condition. I had not been in the gym. I was sedentary. And so I would start just huffing and puffing and my heart would be racing. And, you know, after a set of squats, my, I would get a little lightheaded, which is normal. That's normal. That happens to everybody who does the exercise. Mm -hmm. And I really had to pick in, in many moments, like I would be in the gym and I would want to run out of the gym, like, because I was feeling lightheaded and mm -hmm. hard to breathe and my heart was racing. You know, we all know what that feels like. And I yeah. want to stop and come back to safety, but but not stopping was more important to me. Like the challenge of like, no, I'm doing another set. I'm doing another set. I'm doing... Mm. And it taught me, and more than any other thing that I did, exposure and otherwise, to just be okay with those feelings. Yeah. So that, when, that you were in that danger. Yes. Mm. Like, I, and I would have to sit on a bench sometimes and literally just focus on one point at the wall and keep telling myself over and over and over. Like I did this to myself. I there's a reason why my heart is pounding. I just did this. I just lifted that mm. weight over there, mm. and um, so for what it's worth, the exercise thing. I know it's it's a whole topic by itself, and I'm kind of passionate about it. It was yeah. the single biggest catapult for me that set me forward, because what I so, discovered is if I could get through an hour and a half at the gym and feel lightheaded and feel yeah. rubbery legs and all those symptoms and just keep going, then when I felt lightheaded or rubbery legs in the shopping mall, it, I didn't care anymore. Easy. Yes. Yeah. Desensitizing so, yes, yourself to I, it absolutely the desensitized yeah. my, to those things. Mm. So, mm. Um, yeah, I, I would highly, highly recommend it. It doesn't matter I what the exercise is. I, I was just going to say, yes, perhaps, yeah. and in the notes that I made, like when people think of exercise, they probably think of running a marathon and swimming the right. Thames. Right. But it doesn't have to be that, does it? It can just be a walk it can be like yeah. housework hoovering if you don't the less you do i guess yes. now yep you know it doesn't yep. really matter as long as you're active you're moving that's exactly right and right now for if and if you've not done anything especially because if your anxiety is keeping you from it 
You know, I, yeah. don't, I don't like the I don't like when my heart rate goes up, so I don't exercise at all. So if you're sedentary, then your conditioning isn't so great, and it might just be a very gentle walk around your garden. That's all you need to start to feel those sensations. But any moving is better than not moving every single time. I had a friend once who used to, when they used to get the heart fluttery thing, they used to run up and down the stairs in the house just okay. to prove to themselves that they were fine. Sure. And you know. And that worked out fine, I'm sure. You're yeah, here, exactly. Right? That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That that was a tough one. I, I think you know maybe by means of encouragement because I always like to offer that. So I also knew that I had made huge steps forward when, if I don't sleep enough, I tend to get those skipped heartbeats. They're called premature yeah. ventricular contractions. Everybody has them. And I have them now and then. And they used to scare the hell out of me. They would, they would trigger instantaneous panic when I would feel them. And when I got to the point where I could be in the gym and like an hour in at the gym and, and have them on a constant basis yeah. and yeah. Just, just keep going. Just let it go. That was a huge, huge, huge step forward too. So, mm. yeah, I would say whatever it takes. So you talked about just walking. It doesn't matter. You don't have to get off your yeah. sofa and, and run a marathon or you don't have to be you know, an Olympic weightlifter. Just do something, mm. something. Mm. And it, there are so many benefits, so many benefits, mental, everything. But that's it, isn't it? It's not just, well, it is everything, as you say, the physical benefits. The, sure. I mean, even, even if you're not getting out of the house, it's not about that. It's just it doesn't matter. everything. It's all like the chemicals, yeah. whatever it is. There are physical benefits. There are mental benefits because of even just like stress management. When you get into yeah. an exercise group, it, it, I do feel better. Now, for me, you know, I'm lifting heavy, so there's an element of, of stress and anger management in that. So mm. if, I, if I've had a really crappy day, it always feels better after I've thrown around some heavy weight for a while. But more yeah. than that, it's the challenge. It's like, oh, I did it. I, I did it. I did something for myself. I feel good. I, think I accomplished that, something. The, yeah. Yeah. The key, the key for me, I think the takeaway from this would be to find the right motivation to do yes. it. Yeah. And that will keep you on that path. Yeah, so maybe you just want to be motivated to run the 5K. Like, who cares? Yeah, yeah, feel? exactly. Just, yeah. just get to yeah. do it. So that's sort of mm. So what, what was next after Sunshine? Next. S science. Yeah. I like how you wrote that. <laughs> sunshine, science. Yeah. Science. Proven to increase feel-good chemicals in the brain. That's what I wrote. So I, I hear a lot about serotonin, stuff like that. I don't especially know too much about it, but yeah. science. There is science behind sunshine. Yes. Is it vitamin D? Yeah, vitamin D. We can't. We need it. We need sunshine to, to synthesize vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And when you're vitamin D deficient, you could have nervous system issues. So it's for people yeah, like yeah. us. We should try and do that. And uh, you know, I, there's a lot of studies, the mood-based studies. So when you go into Scandinavian countries where, and up north up into the Arctic Circle, where the sun yeah. doesn't really shine for six yeah, months yeah. at a time, mm -hmm. you know that the depressive moods become more common. And yeah, the sun makes you feel good. Just, I mean, do you feel that yourself, like when winter time comes and it's earlier dark nights and um, seasonal, do you ever notice it? Seasonal affective disorder. I yeah, is that a thing? That. Is that a thing? Should we ruffle some feathers or is... I, it's probably a thing. I, I, it's probably a thing. I, I don't say it's not a thing because you know what? I, I never, I used to really like the winter and the last five or six years I'm growing tired of the winter just because I don't, I don't want to shovel snow anymore. Like I'm just getting tired of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get a lot of snow around here sometimes. We do. So uh, I just don't want to shovel a lot of snow anymore. So yes, when it's a particularly harsh winter here in New York and it feels like it drags on from October through freaking March, mm. I, yeah, I'm losing it by the end a little bit. So I yeah, can totally yeah. get why people would, would be, become a little depressed and down and anxious. I don't necessarily notice it so much in the winter like that I feel down, but what I do notice is that when the sun's out, I do feel better. Like sure. I feel, although I moan about the heat and stuff, but like my favorite time of year is probably March, April, when it's the sun's just starting to come out. You know, it's not too hot. There's a bit of a breeze. Yeah. But that's the sunshine definitely makes me feel more positive. I think so. There have been mm -hmm. times, you know, especially because I've also dealt with depression from time to time. And there have been times when I've had to force myself to literally just go out into my backyard and sit in the sun. And just Even get if some, I did yeah. nothing and just put headphones on and listen to music, just sit in the sun. I haven't had to do that mm. for years, but and I would feel better. You know, not yeah, yeah. fix everything, but I would feel better after sitting in the sun for say twenty or thirty minutes, just having the yeah. sun hit my face. There's something about mm. it. So, yeah, get outside. Being in a dark it. house all the time is not good. Let's talk about sleep. We were talking about it before we went live. I'm not sleeping well at the moment. It's rough, dude. The I go through. <laughs> it's it's so weird. I go through these stages. 
I'll be sleeping fine for weeks, like having plenty of sleep and I'm getting up early and everything's hunky dory. But then I guess the first night where I just can't get to sleep and then I'll have a, a night where I just feel like I'm waking up every five, ten minutes. I'm probably not. And then you get, I suppose the worst time is when you go to bed, you're messing on your phone till stupid o'clock. Then you put your phone down knowing that you've got to get up in a few hours. Yeah. And then you, you've already jeopardised your day. I feel like the first thing I think about when I wake in the morning then is like I've already sabotaged myself and then I'm already negative and then I'll start focusing on how I'm feeling, stuff like that. Am I already tired? Have I got enough energy to do this or that? You know, so it, it's like you're, you're waking automatically negative. So it's just bad. Sabotage. Yeah, because because you did that. Like I, I, I thought that. Like I did this to myself. Yeah. I said, why did yeah, I stay yeah. until three a.m.? I should have done yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's so weird. And you always find that the, like when you do put your phone down later at night, you think maybe you're going to be tireder. But for some reason, your brain just decides, nah. I know that there's a whole lot of research now. In fact, I think in the latest, you don't even have to jailbreak your the phone. blue light. The blue light. Like iOS yeah. now has a thing called night night mode or something yeah yeah well i've got android uh, samsung and that's got a blue it light too, filter right? yeah. yeah yeah and there's a there's a reasonable amount of of evidence that seems to say that those that blue light disrupts our circadian rhythms and keeps you awake i i will just say i put my blue light filter on last night and it made no freaking difference <laughs> whatsoever let's get samsung on the phone i want my money back <laughs> well, i'm gonna guess it's probably a cumulative thing but i i know that uh what's weird about that and not to talk too much about the devices but the business that i'm in i'm in a technical business i own a technology company so the network never sleeps so these things are our link to what's going on in our own network and our servers so there are alert messages that come to us at all hours of the night. Not so much when things are running well, but and I got into the bad habit many years ago of the phone is always next to me all the time. It never goes off. It doesn't go on silent. It doesn't do anything because right. what if something goes down? I need to hear it, right? Yeah, yeah. And what I find is like we're engineered to the point now where that's not even a thing anymore for the most part. So nothing happens at three mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning. But I'm in that habit. And if I yeah. turn the phone on, if I just unlock the screen and that light hits my eyes, I am up. I am up. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it, it is a thing. Now, I don't know how it affects me going to sleep. I know that there are people probably watching and listening to this that will yell at me and say, I told you it's keeping you awake. <laughs> and you know who you are. Like, no phone before bed. I get told that a lot. But, I always uh, do. Right. People tell you the same thing. Yeah, but I do the same thing. And uh, so sleep is a tough one because I think when you don't, so you feel like it starts you off in a negative tone. Like, I just, I ruined my day. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel that. Definitely. Yeah. Even if I've gone, like sometimes I'll go to bed like super early, but I can still, if I have an unsettled night, right. because that happens now and again, like it's very rare that I'll just, it's probably very rare for most people to just go straight through sleep, wake up as your alarm goes off and feel superb. There's probably not that many people. Well, I didn't even know that's a real thing. I, <laughs> yeah. People say it is, but I don't know. I've seen it in the movies. Right, speak. right. It must be real. Yeah, yeah. But I suppose that's it. I suppose being negative automatically like the way that I am, perhaps, I think too much about it. Like yeah. everybody gets up like that. Nobody wants to get up for school in the morning, you know? It's oh, just I... that because, you know. Yeah, that's what I think. I mean, I assume that everybody yeah. hates waking yeah. up. <laughs> so, but I know that people, you know, oh, I feel so good this morning. I feel so refreshed. I don't... I've had that a few times. I have woke up and actually felt, you know, yeah. ready, ready to tackle whatever. Yes, it's rare. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, sleep is not a strong point for me. It's just not. I don't sleep a lot. I, I, I haven't for a long time. I, I'm kind of like okay with, uh, we were talking about before we started recording, I'm kind of okay with, with the three and a half, four hours, you know, and then, like I said, every, every week or so I have to do a longer night. Mm. But uh, it just seems to work for me, and I don't seem to be walking around sleep deprived. But, you know, whatever. Whatever works for you. I guess the, the key here is find the groove that works for you. Yeah, you know, yeah. Sleep is important. But you read, like, and I said it in my notes myself, like, try and get a regular sleep and make sure you get enough. But when you're struggling, it's really, like, when people say that's the advice, get, you, get your head down at the same time, get a regular pattern. But when you can't sleep, it's like, how can you take that advice? So I, I feel their pain. Yeah. If that's what you're reading on the internet, you know, get yourself a regular sleeping pattern sorted out. Well, I can't. But, you know, just, I suppose, 
go to bed at the same time. The advice that you see is go to bed at a regular time. If you right. can't sleep, don't just lay there, you know, get up, yep. read a book or something and associate bed with sleep. Right. Don't, That's, no phone, no TV. Yeah, no, yeah. No nothing. That's I, it. I've heard all of those things. Yeah, yeah. But you know what's so funny? And, and, mm. and I, I'm sure there's validity in that because zillions of people do it and they have success with it. So I'm not saying yeah, yeah. that it's wrong. But for me, it's always like, you know, geez, I, I wish I had more money and that the advice would be, well, go get a million dollars. Like, well, yeah, that's great advice. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Like, yeah. you know, like when you're telling the person who doesn't really sleep, just, yeah. just go to bed earlier. But I, but I don't go to bed. That's the problem. I'm just going to lay there and like my eyes will be wide open. But I don't know. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think just whatever your groove is, is probably the best. Of, I'm not a good person to offer advice on sleep. But I will acknowledge that when I get too sleep deprived, I am more likely to have anxiety issues. Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so so sleep. I guess find the best way you can to, to get sleep. I, I'm, 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 not good, I'm not a good person to offer sleep advice because I don't. We, we, we were just got done talking about sleep, and we wanted to move on to, in my article, I talked about like taking care of your like emotional and spiritual health. And you wrote in your notes, do things that make you smile. And that is pretty big. Yes. yes. So let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think that the the main thing, like I was thinking, like hobbies. I don't know what it is. There's there's so many different things, different sports, whatever it is. But the main takeaway for me was to make sure that it was something you were doing because you want to do it, not because it distracts you from anxiety. So that was my main sort of thing. So whatever it is, sewing. If you like right. sewing, you know, grab the sewing kit when you're feeling that you've maybe achieved all you needed to do today you've done the uncomfortable stuff you know right. so rather than if you've got to go somewhere sit there and do some sewing to try and take your mind off it that's not I was thinking you know do things that make you smile because you want to do them that's true that's a good point so they're not just anxiety tools they're yeah yeah like normal people people who don't have anxiety have things they like to do so yeah you know we should have things we like to do too now I I think sometimes when you're in the thick of it and you're really struggling, it's hard to find pleasure in things like that sometimes. Because yeah. when you're so incredibly focused on just how you feel, it, it can be hard to like, you know, I guess find uh, fun in things. I know you've always been like a, a gamer a bit, you know. Oh yeah. Like, so even when you're struggling, does that help you? Yeah. You still enjoy it? it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's one of the only things that can sort of just take me away. Yeah. distraction i guess it's because you're not just sitting watching you're actually controlling and sure. you know you're, ha you're having to actually take part in an active thing rather than just sitting watching tv or reading a book that makes sense so it, it does help but what i try not to do is i try not to do that if i'm feeling this if i'm feeling bad right. then i try not to go on and use that as a distraction because i don't want to I don't want it to become like a safety thing because sure. heading back there to the safety. Yep. You know, I'd rather just I'll, pl I'll play the game when I want to play the game, not okay. when I feel that I've got to now because I feel like crap. So that's good. So I, I that's actually yeah, yeah. So you can find enjoyment in, in the gaming, but you just won't go to it as a escape from. Oh, I'm feeling panicky. I better fire up my yeah. PS4 or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. pretty good. And I think, you know, and I think a lot of us, too, would probably think, well, before I had these problems, I used to enjoy doing this. Or, you know, mm -hmm. I, I used to like to do this. And the, odds are we all change over time. Maybe we don't enjoy the same hobbies that we used to. But odds are, if you used to like it, you still like it. Yeah, so yeah. I think you forget. You forget the thing. You forget the person that you was and the things that you like used to do, don't you? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You I, create new new habits that are sort of to accommodate anxiety that's what I've done in the past like you you know you find things to do that do distract you and do help you right. but you're not you know maybe not passionate about it you know that's true and so that distinction between using it as a distraction and actually finding joy in it is probably yeah yeah and in the beginning sometimes it might be more of a distraction but in the end it would become just something that anything that makes you happy is never a bad thing so that's it I say I put I put in my thing anything that makes you feel happy, energized, fulfilled, motivated, refreshed, sure, sure, prepared, alive. It's a good thing. I know that for me, uh, the gym became a little bit of that because so it it does mm. solve two purposes. It's it's also a hobby, I guess I will call it a hobby. Yeah. But uh, I got into for a while. I got into woodworking again. So when I renovated the house, we did a lot of renovations in the house and. 
So I did a lot of the woodworking myself, and then I got tired of doing it. But it was good to get those things help in a big way. Yeah, definitely. Um, I decided to learn to play the guitar, so I, I use the guitar as as a stress reduction, and that's like just my I can just put my headphones on, plug them in, you know, and just play for yeah. an hour and, and, and get enjoyment. Cool. Just just for the enjoyment, and when when mm. you do that, I find that it brings my overall stress and anxiety levels down. So when when I'm doing things that make me happy then I am much more resolute. I'm able to deal with yeah. much, shovel more crap as it comes my way, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's definitely worth it, Which for sure. Which leads us, that leads on to the time and stress management. Time and stress management. I'm probably not a good person to lecture on this too because I just, I brute force my way <laughs> through life. <laughs> I will freely admit that I, I am not the best uh, person yeah. at that. I, I, but it, it matters, right? Mm -hmm. And I think so much of, well, what's the best way to say this? I think time and stress management is a control issue. I yeah. really do. Oh, really great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really do. And I think it's time management, if you feel like your schedule is so hectic that you can't breathe, mm -hmm. or, or you're feeling stress or pressure because of what's on your plate, or, you know, what you have to do, tasks, obligations. Yeah. I think that really is a control thing. Like, yeah, yeah, I would agree. Right, I like that. If you feel like you're not controlling it, it becomes hard for many people to deal with, I guess. My dad's called me an ostrich a few times because I bury my head in the sand when stuff's going on. So okay. that's you've either got the trying to do everything and get it all done, or yeah. the opposite to that, I guess, is just hide from everything. Yeah, yeah. we'll wait until but, either somebody else deals with it or it comes to a point where I'm freaking out big time because I have no choice but to deal with it. Right, it doesn't make it worse in the end. So yeah, you yeah, hide exactly. from whatever the issue is. Mm, you know? mm. So I don't know. Stress management is a tough one. I, I, it's it's something that I could probably talk talk about at length because of what my what is my approach. I don't even know what my approach to that is. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I and I think we're all different. So if you, if some people have a very strong internal feeling of control. Like I feel like I can control my day every day, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So even yeah. when, when stuff happens that's unexpected, like, okay, well, no problem. We're just going to deal with it. I'm going to delegate it or I'm going to do it myself. And like, I don't, because for me, for whatever reason, I just wake up every morning and I always have with the belief that I control my day. But I think if you're the type of person that doesn't feel that way, like the day will control you, mm -hmm. you know, unforeseen circumstances, like my schedule will get messed up. Somebody will change something on me or something will happen that I wasn't expecting. And, and if that is a source of stress and anxiety, then... I don't know how you deal with that because I don't understand that yeah. point of view. So I'm not sure what your view is on that. I don't. Nobody decides anything for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't well, good. Well, you know I'm what I mean. Like, so you have that, right, you, you have yeah. that internal sense of. Control. I don't know whether I don't know whether it's a good thing or not. I don't know whether like feeling the need to be in control is a good thing. I don't know. I think it. I think a lot of it is. This is this is a crazy discussion, but I think a lot of it is. Yeah knowing when to exert that and like take control and I can control this and I will control this and I will yeah, really yeah. shape this the way I want it and knowing mm -hmm. when you can't like this battle yeah, I can't yeah. fight and it's okay that I can't control this I will come back to it nobody's bleeding nobody's gonna die this is fine I suppose it's like being in control of situations that are important that's the thing like not deciding whether we're having mashed potato or roast potato right. that's probably big you know, so people per perhaps get that controlling, but that's not what you're saying. You no, don't have to be in control of yeah, how I, thick the grave is. I think that's probably um, true, and I think sometimes yeah. stress becomes uh, that feeling of being overwhelmed, and especially when you're struggling with anxiety and panic a lot. I know in my worst days, yeah. just like the phone ringing was too much. Mm. Just having to decide whether or not I should answer the freaking phone was very, very yeah. difficult. Or knowing, like, well, I have to eat something, but, like, what the hell should I take out of the refrigerator? These were hard decisions, mm. and, and they would stress me out to a certain extent. So I guess it depends on your mental state. When, when you're yeah, not, yeah. you know, when you're feeling better, it's probably, it's probably easier to manage stress and your time. Mm. But, like, what did you actually write here? Don't let external things get on top of you. Do what you yeah, it's, all, it's about bills burying your head in the sand. Don't leave things till the last minute. And so, yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with the schedule. I, I would probably say, I, I don't plan a lot ahead, but I used to live entirely freeform, entirely. 
So I lived my life with like little scraps of paper, like notes to remind myself to do stuff. And I would forget things and I had no calendar and no schedule. And I lived for many, many years that way. But in the last 10 years, I do kind of have a schedule. I, I roughly know what's going to happen yeah. today or this week. Mm. But, but having no schedule and just let life come at you, I think it's probably a bad idea. That's pretty much how I live. Just I tend like not to plan things. Yeah, because I always feel like if we plan something, it gives me time to anticipate it. So it's not a good, I'm not saying this is the way to do it, I'm saying it's a bad, you know. I, I do acknowledge that that is not the right way to do it. So you might not be planning, you won't, don't want to plan something because then you're going to anticipate having to do that thing. Go yeah, yeah, exactly. Or whatever it mm. needs to be, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Whereas I should be, I should, I should plan to go and do something yeah. and then go and do it and prove to myself that it didn't matter whether I was freaking out for a week before it or not. Right. I still did it. Still got through it. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. So I think the the, pl mm. the planning and scheduling thing, I always aspire like to, to, to be that person like that says, okay, when I, you know, the, I'm going to spend 30 minutes on my email and I'm going to make sure I spend yeah. 30 minutes on this. Like, I'm <laughs> never going to be that guy. Like it seems like I should be that guy, but it's never going to happen. And then I wonder when you are that person, does it fix stress and time management or does it just make it worse? It's probably it's worse. I think two it, minutes over on that phone call. Right. Yeah. To me, I think it's just, you know, that rigid thing is just not something I, I accept that well. So. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I feel like I'm offering anything today. It's just, <laughs> you're sort of rambling on, and but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's good. So what let's can, look at the unhealthy, next? unhealthy lifestyle. Unhealthy stuff, yes. Well, let's go through that. I'm a good boy. I don't do any of this. We've got alcohol. Alcohol, yeah. which is up that's, there. I think the number one thing that's accessible to all of us, you know. I would say. I would say. And then you've got recreational drugs, smoking. I'll just run through the list. Caffeine, yeah. sitting at a computer all day and night, junk food and staying up all night. That's the things that I wrote, the unhealthy choices. Yeah. There's probably hundreds more. It's just that these were the ones that really stuck out for me. You're probably right. I would agree with that list entirely. Alcohol, for me, I will tell you that there was a very long time where I had no alcohol, nothing. So I had no caffeine and no alcohol because anything that... You know, the caffeine, obviously, because it would make my heart race. I didn't like yeah. that. So uh, no caffeine and no alcohol because I was worried how I would feel. Um, you know, if I got that, that slightly buzzed or drunk feeling, it didn't. that wasn't good. I didn't like it's a, it. That's a really tricky one because I used to. Like, I, I don't think I've touched alcohol for about eight, nine years, something yeah. stupid like that. But I used to have a drink every night to try and take the edge off. Yes. But then I got to the point, like however long ago it was, many years ago, where it just, it started to, rather than making me feel less anxious, it just started making me question how I was feeling after I'd had the drink. So yeah. it was like a complete role reversal. I used to feel that I had to have a drink to try and make me feel different. Right. And then it became a thing where I can't have a drink because now I don't like that different how it makes you feel. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's really strange. And I think in my article, I wrote anything that changes your mental state, and I was very hyper vigilant against that. Like, I don't want anything that makes me feel differently because I don't want to feel differently. Like, yeah, yeah. You know that that was that was a little bit uh, scary for me. So mm -hmm. it, for me, it was a big deal when I got to the point where it's like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a drink. Like, and I would like just sip on it a little bit and slowly, like, all right, am I okay? Am I okay? Am I okay? But I, I, that's a, alcohol is a tough one because I think a lot of people do kind of use it. They sort of self-medicate with it. The, uh, the thing for me about, I don't know, it was probably about three or four years ago, I went to a friend's house. Uh, we were going around there for dinner and he bought some non-alcoholic beer. And I knew that it was non-alcoholic. And I had a few sips out of the bottle. And I just couldn't drink anymore because I was feeling the effects of alcohol. Yeah. Even though it was non-alcoholic. Which said to me, like, I know that 99% of this normal if i was to drink alcohol would be in my head yes. because i'm drinking non-alcoholic beer and it's making me feel so that just answered the question like the majority of the effects were probably in my head anyway yeah it was just that i don't know what it was maybe the taste of alcohol the taste of beer or whatever well, just triggered maybe the memory yes and I think those feelings could be real because alcohol does have a real impact on our bodies. Mm. But then 
we magnify them. So for me, I would get that first feeling of being maybe a little, you know, disconnected. But we, I don't know what the feel. Everybody seems to experience different things, but and yeah. that would freak me out. But I'd have to sit and remind myself of, well, you know, you had whatever. I had a half a drink or I had a beer or whatever it is. And, you know, for a guy that weighs over 200 pounds, I'm like a lightweight with that stuff. And I was for such a long time. But uh, I think that also became for me, as much as I think our advice here is avoid unhealthy choices like alcohol mm. on a regular mm. basis or excessively, it actually became an exposure tool for me. Like, not that I would right. go out and seek it, but if I was in a social situation and I could have a drink, it got to the point where it's like, okay, well, can I? And let me, let me, let me do this and keep reminding myself that I did this on purpose and it's okay and it's fine. I will feel better in, in a half hour, and I always would. And so, mm -hmm. as crazy as it sounds, while alcohol is probably something to be avoided for the most part, it it actually helped me. I think a, only as an exposure tool. Yeah, I think perhaps as we've said on a, a number of other things, it's like as long as the alcohol is not being used as a crutch or a safety behavior, right. you know, you're not. You're not right. taking a drink to try and uh, yeah, I've never hide, hide away. Yeah, 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 yeah. So as long as you know, I in know. moderation, I guess. But I do know, I know one person in particular that actually, well, at least did years ago. I don't know if they're doing it anymore, but would walk around all day with you know with their briefcase, like conducting business, and in the briefcase was always a collection of you know small, like tiny Miniatures. bottles. Yeah, yeah. You buy it at a liquor store, or they give you on an airplane, and he always had a bunch of those in his briefcase. And so when he would start to feel panicky, he would. He would drink one and it would calm him down. So right. Right. alcohol is a tough one. But I think the, the advice that we're offering here is, you know, lifestyle choices matter. So alcohol and recreational drugs and smoking and things that generally speaking aren't probably healthy. You know, smoking is just, yeah. we know it now. This is 2017. We are aware that smoking is going to kill you dead. So don't do it. Um, not being able to breathe is a bad thing. Like yeah, sit, sitting all day is that's a bad it. thing. Not sleeping is a bad thing. Eating junk food is a bad thing. We all know this. So the, this the is takeaway it. is just make the best choices you could make. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think make the choices that any person would make, whether anxiety or not. Like everybody wants to be healthy, right? If we have our choice. So this is it. yeah, so this just make the best choices we can. And I think <clears throat> I'll add one more thing, I guess, as we try and wrap it up. But like one thing that helped for me in a big way was when I started to understand that when I was out and feeling crappy and like working on that, like it doesn't matter that I feel crappy, I'm still gonna get to the office, I'm still gonna live my life. I would sometimes stop and literally look around me and think that guy probably got three hours of sleep too. Or like that woman over there probably had a big fight with her husband this morning or her kids were late to school and it was like a stressful, like, you know, tough morning, but she's still out going to work and doing her thing. And so we try and make the best lifestyle choices we can, and we aspire to be fit and healthy and strong and bodies functioning perfectly and like spiritually enlightened and awesomely sharp mentally. But nobody walks around like that. Yeah, like nobody. Exactly. It's unrealistic. Ever, right. So we we those are things that we can aspire to and try and make the best choices we can. But you're never going to get to a perfect place, either mentally yeah. or physically. Mm. And so understanding like the people around me probably feel just as bad as I do for a variety of reasons and yet they're mm. still going so mm. Mm. you know I, I don't know so and I think that's just because we're, we're telling people to try and make healthy lifestyle choices but if we fail to make those choices and we feel yeah, like don't that, beat yourself up yeah, right it, it, it's yeah. okay it's, we're not telling you to get to a perfect place mm. I'm, I'm far from in a perfect place I think yeah, yeah. everybody is so I mean there's, there's probably people out there that have had severe panic attacks major anxiety drank beer smoked cigarettes in KFC and got over it. Yeah. So there probably are people out. It's I suppose it's the choices they make when it comes to dealing with the anxiety and that's the you know facing your fears. Yes. Essentially. You know it's so funny because I don't really listen to to Joe. You know Joe Rogan because you're a UFC guy, right? The oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The US comedian, and, and he yeah. has a very very popular podcast that I don't generally listen to. Certainly but does. A few weeks ago, I happened to see an excerpt on YouTube, and I don't even remember the name of the guy he was talking to. To be honest with you, he made his fortune playing poker. This dude, and he very matter of factly told a story about how. He was in Las Vegas with friends of his, and they were drinking, just continuously drinking 24 hours a day. He didn't sleep for like two days. He was popping all kinds of different drugs for fun. 
And he, he popped a, like four times the maximum dose of like Viagra because he wanted to have some fun and he'd never tried it before. And he wound up literally get putting himself in the emergency room because it, he just, the human body is not meant to do all of those things yeah. for three days straight. And lo and behold, he wound up in the emergency room and did have a mild heart attack at the ripe age of like 31. But it was an extreme, extreme circumstance. Yeah. And yeah. this guy told the story as if he told the story about how he went to the supermarket and bought eggs. Yeah, there was no fear in the story. There was no. He didn't change his lifestyle. He's a crazy person, but you know, and, and it really made me stop. As opposed to being the entertaining story, and it shouldn't be an entertaining story to hear a guy say that he gave himself a heart attack. But to see yeah. how he just so matter of factly discussed all oh, these wow. incredibly unhealthy yeah. things and how they mm. led to a stay in the hospital blew me away. And it really, mm. I thought about our podcast here, and I thought like about how where I've been and think it's so. It's so your reaction to what's going on and how you yeah. frame it. Yeah, so yeah. This dude wound up in the hospital and practically killed himself. And he told the story on a podcast as if he was telling the story. Like I said about going skiing. Yeah. There's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so what's our excuse? Really? God, yeah. I, was, yeah. Yeah. I was driving and I felt a little panicky. Oh, boo-hoo. Mm. <laughs> your own interpretation. It, it is. It is. But we should make the best choices we can to try and maximize our choices, uh, maximize our odds of feeling good. That's, mm. that's about all we're mm. doing here, right? So, that's it. Yeah. Give yourself a head start. Yeah. Or give yourself every chance to get there. Yeah. I think we may have broken a record here on this. I'm not sure. We've been going yes. for a while. <laughs> yeah, we're, this is probably going to be for every bit of 40 minutes if anybody's hung in all the way. So I guess we'll kind of wrap <laughs> well up. Well done. Well, it was the last, it's the last part of the article, isn't it? So. It is. It is. And I think we should probably talk a little bit about what we're going to do next. Okay. There was one, you know, there is one more tiny little, you know, thing in the in the article called the good news about how this is so treatable. But and, we don't want to give you that. No, that's all good. We don't want to talk about good things. <laughs> so I don't know if that's worthy of its own episode, but maybe we'll do a Q and A. We'll do that one. We'll do a Q and A. We'll try and wrap things up next time. Put a bow yeah. on it, I guess. Um, maybe we're going to talk. And you know, I guess I'm asking for people if you've gotten this far, if you're 40 minutes into it, you're still hanging in there, like more power to you and uh you know maybe we want to do well maybe we'll do one on medications maybe yeah yeah, yeah. so that's kind of where we are so i guess as always comments questions hate mail flames whatever <laughs> trolls bring them uh we want to hear it all the oh, comments dear. are so good I, I sent you one last night on that the comments sometimes yeah, yeah. are so great so great i really appreciate them it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. good. So anyway, like you know, we're helping. We're helping some people, and that's the. I think so. I think so. Mm. Sometimes I'm not sure how we're helping people, but I keep maybe it's very, just for very nice comments the, from people so. for the giggles. Maybe. Oh, all right. <laughs> so that's the deal. So as always, thatanxietyguy.com or that anxiety guy anywhere you want. Facebook, Twitter, it doesn't matter. Billy. So anxietyunited.com and the same rules apply. Yeah. Links are in the description. Sure. Sure. So I guess we will do a wrap up next time, maybe a Q and A, yeah. and uh, yeah, we'll kind of go from there. And then we'll suggestions, decide. suggestions, yeah, yeah. yeah suggestions. Like, Actually, I had had some suggestions. Somebody, uh, somebody wanted to talk about fatigue, like how do you get okay. past the fatigue? I know we've talked about that you and I sometimes that feeling. Yeah, that, that was so the awesome. number one. That yeah. was the number one symptom on the was whole it? thing. That you yeah, do. fatigue. I've had a couple of suggestions of things that people that would like us to talk about. So I think next time we'll just do a wrap up. We'll do a bit of a Q and A. We'll we'll respond to some questions that we've gotten over yeah, the time. Yeah. So if you've got any, if you've got any questions, yeah. and you've got this far into the podcast, not only do you get a medal, but we will also answer <laughs> your question. Yes, we will. <laughs> next week, we'll talk to you by name next week. Yes, it's like it'll be your moment of greatness, your brush with it's fame. <laughs> Thank you. All right, folks. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time. I have to find my recording software and stop it. This is the awkward time when Drew has to try and stop the recording. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Ta-da.